better understanding their approach to these projects. I also look forward to hearing from any community members who may testify regarding these projects. As always, I believe the community's voice must be centered in the land use process, and I urge the applicants to listen closely to the concerns raised by members of the community. I look forward to asking more question, ask questions after the applicants present. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Whip. Council, please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel consists of Mr. Richard Lobel. Council, please administer the affirmation. Ms. Sobel, could you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Richard Lobel. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and in answer to all council member questions? I do. You may begin. Acting Chair Lewis, council members, good morning. Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel PC for the applicant, Kevin Neely. Uh, if somebody can load the presentation, thank you. So we're here today for... Um, an application which has received the unanimous support of Queens Community Board 13, as well as of the Queensboro President and the City Planning Commission. It is the 245-06 South Conduit Avenue commercial overlay. Next slide. Uh, very simply, the applicant is proposing to rezone uh, this block frontage with six lots from an R32C13 zoning district to an R32 R32C23 zoning district. Uh, this would permit the continued operation of an existing tire sales establishment. We will now go through the maps uh, and materials to demonstrate why this is particularly appropriate. Uh, the next slide is the zoning map, uh, which demonstrates the existing underlying R32 zoning along with a C13 commercial overlay. Uh, the next slide is the tax map, which shows in a little more detail the six lots that would be affected by this rezoning. Uh, the area in red is the applicant's current tire uh, fixing and sales establishment. The next slide is the area map. Uh, and the area map, I think, demonstrates well why this is an appropriate rezoning. The C13 overlay district allows for a range of commercial uses, uh, but basically allows for retail uses in use group six. Uh, the proposed rezoning as a C23 would allow for a slightly larger range of uses, including home furnishings and repair, as well as uh, these limited auto-related uses, such as the tire establishment here. Um, being front, being, having frontage on uh, Sunrise Highway in South Conduit, this is a, uh, obviously an active thoroughfare with many intensive commercial uses. Uh, and so the nature of the traffic, as well as the nature of the visitors to this site, would support this slight modification from a C13 to a C23 to allow for this broader range of uses. In fact, most city-sponsored rezonings now include C2 rather than C1 overlays so that we can encourage our business community to locate and have less of a chance of having sites go dark. So here in particular, we have a tire establishment, serves not only the local area, but further afield. People come in on a regular basis for fixes. Uh, Kevin Neely, the applicant, has been on the site for years uh, and uh, has recently uh, encountered issues because the uh, use group for the tire uh, fixing and, and, uh, and sales establishment is a use group eight use, which would not be permitted in a C1, but would be permitted in a C2. Uh, the next slide demonstrates the nature of the zoning change on the zoning map. And you can see right now there is a C13 overlay. All six of the lots included within the rezoning area have commercial uses on them. Uh, the underlying R32 does not change. The underlying bulk that's available at the site does not change. There would be no uh, proposed change as far as development is concerned other than uh, allowing Kevin to operate here legally and to actually make repairs and, and improvements to his existing tire shop. Um, you, we have included photos in the following slides. Feel free to uh, page through those quickly on the presentation. Uh, and then the next slide after the photos. Uh, Actually, that could be it because I don't think we included uh, plans and materials because this is merely illustrative. Um, but those were presented to um, the community board, which again voted unanimously in favor. Community board 13 in Queens, as I'm sure Council Member Brooks Powers is aware, uh, is uh, you know can be very challenging in terms of land use. Uh, but they did feel that Kevin was a valued applicant, that business at this area in this area should be encouraged, and so uh, happily we did get. Uh, unanimous approval throughout the process. So with that, um, that is the entirety of the application, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you. I have two quick questions for the applicant team regarding these applications before I turn it over to Majority Whip Books Powers. First question, this business has operated at this location for many years. What is the current legal status? So the current legal status is that they uh, have is been issued violations uh, in terms of the use group. So the applicant uh, has, um, has been operating at the site for uh, greater than 20 years uh, and was leasing the site for a period of time and then uh, saved up money and essentially spent what amounts to be his life savings to purchase the site. Uh, at that time, uh, the site began accruing violations. At the time, he thought that the existing commercial overlay was sufficient. It was not. And so uh, he is in technical violation of the zoning resolution. While the C-13 would permit use group 6, his tire sale establishment and fixing establishment of use group 8 would not be permitted. All right, thank you for that. Now Chair Riley's here, so I'll let him continue wow. with today's hearing. <laughs> thank you, Chair Lewis. Uh, how you doing, Richard? Very well, Chair. Does the shop plan on expanding? Uh, it, it, it plans on, it does not plan on expanding beyond the existing two lots on which it is located. It does plan on um, providing uh, improvements to that existing property. So it would not previously have been able to go to Department of Buildings and to alter the existing building given the fact that the use group was not permitted. Once the rezoning hopefully goes through, They'll be able to file alteration applications at DOB, uh, and this was all fully presented to the community board, including the opportunity to build more of a permanent structure to allow for more cars to come off the street and relieve some congestion on South Conduit. So, you know, a universally beloved application, and our applicant is, uh, you know, a wonderful applicant. And how many years has this rezoning process taken? Uh, sadly, it's taken now over three years uh, for a commercial overlay rezoning. We've been uh, through the pandemic, which I think um, contributed to some delays in the application. Uh, and there have also been um, issues with regards to environmental review and, and the agency. Having said that, um, we're happy to be where we are, but yeah, it has taken them some time. Thank you. I would now like to turn to Majority Whip Brooks Powers to ask questions. Hi, how are you? Very well. Nice to see you in person. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Um, last two years has been on virtual Zoom. Yes. Um, is the applicant actually physically here today? He's not. Um, he he uh, unfortunately was unable to attend, and um, given the straightforward nature of the application, mm -hmm. uh, I told him it was okay to, to not to not attend. I mean, so uh, so it's. I felt that um, he he said that he had authorized me to give him uh, the full representation, and so I'm happy to do that. When you presented at the community board, was he present? He was present. Okay. Uh, and and frankly, um, the land use committee, the full board, it was. Uh, an emotional time for him. He's a, a you know, he's a, a local product. He he purchased his property in good faith, put all of his life savings into this. I think spent over a million dollars in total to purchase the properties, and then was um, immediately hit with violations. So, um, you know, uh, it's it's uh, community board 13 was wonderful in this regard. They were really supportive and and want to see this applicant uh, do well. How many employees work at the tire shop? Uh, there's roughly four to five existing empl employees. Four to five. Uh, that would uh, probably be maintained uh, uh, just uh, in the in the event the rezoning is granted. And do you know if they are hired from the local community? Uh, I think Kevin makes an effort to hire from the local community, um, uh, and I can I can follow up with him on that. Mm -hmm. But um, essentially, given the hours of operation of the tire shop, the fact that there is constant demand for fixes, um, it behooves him to have local workers because they're better <coughs> able to staff the facility. The borough president's report includes um, a recommendation for adding green infrastructure along the edge of the shop to improve drainage. Is the owner willing to commit to improving the sidewalk condition through green infrastructure and other improvements as a part of this application? He is. Um, as part of the application, you would also be required to file a, a building uh, builder's pavement plan, uh, which would include improvements to the street frontage, the sidewalk, and, and such. Uh, but, but the applicant, uh, in full discussion with the community board, said he'd be happy to beautify the property. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Thank you, Majority Whip. Uh, does any more colleagues have any questions for this applicant panel? There being no questions, this applicant panel is excused. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on 245-06? South Conduit Avenue, commercial overlay proposal, remotely or in person. Uh, one minute, please, Chair.
There are no additional witnesses either online or in person. Thank you, Council. There being no members of the public who wish to testify on preconsiders LUs related to ULIP number C230006, CMQ, relating to the 245-06 South Conduit Avenue commercial overlay proposal. This pu the public hearing is now closed and the items are laid over. I will now open the public hearing on preconsiders LUs related to ULIP number C200232, ZMQ and N. 220330ZRQ relating to the 25 46 Far Rockaway Boulevard rezoning proposal in Majority Whip Brooks Powers District in Queens. This application seeks a rezone, a zoning map amendment to rezone existing R4 1 to an R6B zoning district and a related zoning text amendment to map an MIH program area. For anyone wishing to testify on this item remotely, if you have not already done so, you must register online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at council.nyc.gov slash land use. And once again, for anyone with, with us in person, please see one of the sergeants to prepare and submit a speaker's card. I would now like to allow Majority uh, Whip Brooks Powers to give her remarks regarding this project. Thank you, Chair. Um, I am going to be reading a statement on behalf of uh, a group of homeowners in the proximity of this project. So it reads, Good morning, Councilwoman Sylvina Brooks Powers and the members of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. We come before you as a community of Far Rockaway, particularly the neighboring homeowners and residents of Hartman Lane, Far Rockaway Boulevard, and Beach Channel Drive to express support for the upzoning of 2546 Far Rockaway Boulevard from an R41 to an R5D. Initially, we were all adamantly opposed to the rezoning in light of all the recently newly built <clears throat> residential building developments less than one mile from this location. Our immediate community is incredibly concerned that having another residential building in a dense area would disrupt <coughs> our quality of life and increase our property taxes, amongst other factors. Upon learning about the upzoning proposal, our community quickly mobilized to have our voices and concerns heard. Mr. Moultrie met with our community on numerous occasions to discuss our grievances and concerns and address any questions we had. As a result, we strategized on a solution that would be mutually beneficial to our community and aligned with his vision. Unfortunately, this upzoning application has the community somewhat divided because we don't want more buildings. Ideally, we wanted to remain an R41 with one to two family homes as a pathway to building a community with fellow homeowners or residents that will take pride in contributing to the community. However, as evidenced in our meetings and survey polls, we all agreed that one of our paramount <clears throat> concerns was that Mr. Moultrie needed to be a better steward of maintaining the property for the past 15 years. Therefore, he lost their confidence and trusted ability to maintain a proposed 24-unit building. Alternatively, our community was given two choices, to rezone or, re or face having yet another drug rehab facility across the street from Challenge Prep School for kindergarten to third graders, in addition to the one directly down the block. Our community deserves better. We unanimously ag all agreed that our neighborhood doesn't need another drug rehab. We need resources, hospitals, and schools. And we will no longer be silent about a proposed development that will put our children and seniors in harm's way. With 51 votes opposing and 68 in favor of the rezoning, the community members in favor of rezoning to an R5D residential only development are conceding and committed to ensuring the promises we as a community were offered by the developer, owner, and contractor, Mr. Isaiah Moultrie, are met. Mr. Moultrie promised to negotiate a resolution agreement with the community to address our concerns. 
Once you, our councilwoman, render your final decision, we intend to meet with Mr. Moultrie within the forthcoming weeks to begin drafting the resolution agreement to outline and commit to language surrounding, but not limited to unforeseen rendering changes, parking, construction schedule, window treatments, adequate rodent and pest control upon de demolition, community landscaping and outreach, garbage removal, community board for the building, um, and input in the final rendering design and job sourcing from within the local community. In recent months, Mr. Moultrie has made a tremendous effort to clean the property to regain our trust. We appreciate Mr. Moultrie being amenable to working with us. Most developers haven't interfaced with the community to the extent he has over the past three months. We hope Mr. Moultrie will keep his word to build a 24-unit structure identical to the rendering he presented to the community and our councilwoman on Thursday, March 2, 2023. We expect Mr. Moultrie to maintain his word to build the schedule and adequately vet and attract future residents who would be good tenants for him and a welcome addition to the Far Rockaway community. We pray this development success will set a new precedent for inclusivity and how the community and developer can collaborate for future development. Thank you for your time, residents and property owners of Far Rockaway. Thank you, Majority Whip. Council, please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel consists of Mr. Richard Robel and Isaiah Moultrie. Council, please administer the affirmation. Panelists, could you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Richard Lobel. <coughs> Isaiah Moultrie. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and in answer to all council member questions? I yes. Do. Thank you. And for the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send the email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now the applicant team may begin. Panelists, as you begin, I'll just ask that you please restate your name and organization for the record. You may begin. Richard Lobel, Sheldon Lobel, PC. Isaiah Moultrie, developer and owner. You may begin. Thank you, Chair Riley, Majority Whip, Brooks Powers, Council members, again, Richard Lobel, Sheldon Lobel, PC. It's an honor to be here with Isaiah Moultrie to represent him on the 2546 Far Rockaway Boulevard rezoning. Next slide. Summary of the rezoning is that we are seeking to rezone what amounts to be four lots and portions of two lots from an R41 zoning district to an R6B zoning district. Uh, the applicant also, as with other rezonings of similar kind, proposes a mandatory inclusionary housing designated area to be mapped with options one and two on the property. Um, and this would facilitate, in accordance with plans and materials submitted to city planning, a five-story, approximately 33,000 square foot 40-dwelling uh, unit multifamily residential building. Uh, Ten of those units would be permanently affordable uh, with parking uh, in the cellar. Uh, I will go through the presentation uh, and will note at the outset that um, this, the presentation and the application currently re reflects an R6B. Uh, obviously, um, the majority of WIP has discussed uh, a ma modification of that application, but for now, uh, we'll discuss what's before the committee. Uh, the next slide is a zoning map which demonstrates the existing zoning of the property uh, being R32 on the development site and R41 on that portion. Um, sorry, R41 on the development site, R32 on the portion to the north of the site included within the re proposed rezoning area. The next two slides are the tax maps, which show with a little bit more specificity uh, the nature of the property. Again, the property itself in red, uh, 80 feet deep, and then the adjacent property to the north at 115 feet deep both proposed at an R6B. The next slide is the area map, which I think demonstrates well why we feel that this rezoning has merit. Um, the area map, as you can see, demonstrates that the property sits along Far Rockaway Boulevard, which itself is a wide street at 75 feet, as well as Beach Channel Drive, which at 70 feet is a wide, narrow street. Uh, in addition, this property is within the area of zoning districts that are currently R6 and R6A. You can see to the lower left-hand corner of the zoning map, uh, or the area map, we have similarly uh, zoned properties, as well as Seaview Towers, which is a 20-story property uh, immediately to the south in yellow. Uh, there are six and five-story multifamily residential buildings within a block to the southwest of the property. And importantly, the A-Train, uh, the 25th Street Far Rockaway stop, 
roughly one block from the property. So when it comes to Queens and it comes to this area, this property is well positioned to handle the moderate increase in density, which would be engendered by the uh, proposed rezoning. Uh, the slides which follow demonstrate the existing conditions on the property. Uh, those are photographs. Please feel free to page through those quickly. Uh, they are, include a vacant lot and a, uh, and a vacant four-story building, as well as the school to the north of the property. Uh, the plans that follow are the floor plans and site plans, uh, which demonstrate what we think is an attractive design. Uh, the property, again, would be five stories. Uh, feel free to forward two slides to demonstrate the cellar plan, uh, which currently has parking allotted for 22 spaces in a fully attended parking lot. Uh, one, slide to, one slide further is the first floor plan, which demonstrates the floor layouts, uh, and then the second floor and illustrative third through fifth floor plans. Um, the elevations follow the floor plans, and I think probably the, the plans immediately after the elevations are most telling uh, in terms of the renderings. Uh, if you can forward to the color renderings, that would be most helpful. The architect, um, because the R6B is allowed to uh, provide for dormers and setbacks, which allow for a modified bulk. Uh, it doesn't really impose itself on the street frontage. It's an attractive design. Uh, and I think if you just want to forward through those renderings, you'll come to the Euler page, which discusses our meetings and hearings to date. Community Board 14 on January 10th issued a conditional approval of this rezoning uh, to an R5D, as in dog, zoning district, uh, as was um, stated by the majority whip and her intention to uh, rezone or at least to recognize the local civic. Uh, that application was thankfully approved by Community Board 14 uh, by a vote of 20 in favor, none opposed, one abstention. The Queensboro president recommended the rezoning at the full R6B, understanding that, of course, that would carry with it required affordability, uh, as did the City Planning Commission by unanimous approval on March 15th. Uh, importantly here, uh, Isaiah did make a tremendous effort uh, being grounded in the surrounding community to go out to his neighbors and, uh, and those at religious institutions and other institutions and received uh, 40 signatures of local community members in support, uh, a letter from the Bayswater Civic Association, again at an R5D, uh, and letters of support from local churches. Uh, I would lastly add that uh, it is endearing uh, the, the um, strength of the support which Isaiah enjoys in the community which has cited his family members, uh, as well as the fact that uh, in, in a letter from the Macedonia Baptist Church, quote, it is important that young people of color see men of color in the position of ownership and development as role models. Therefore, I would like to offer my support for this project. Uh, it is not something that was lost on the community board, this, uh, that Isaiah uh, is uh, an important applicant and that uh, projects of this nature should be encouraged and even celebrated. So with that, we're happy to discuss the uh, individual uh, particulars around the application, and Isaiah and I are available for questions. Thank you, Richard, and thank you, Isaiah. I have a few questions for the applicant team uh, regarding these applications before I turn it over to Majority Whip Brooks Powers. Uh, the community board's disapproval vote included an explanation that the board would have supported the application at an R5D zoning district. How would the development on the R5D differ from what you presented at an R6B? Sure, Chair. So um, uh, it, it was a very spirited community board uh, discussion uh, and very involved. Um, at, at an R5D, this project uh, tops out at four stories as opposed to the R6B, which would permit five stories. Uh, at an R5D, we end up with um, roughly 23 residential units as opposed, opposed to the 40 proposed. Um, Unfortunately, the, um, there, you know, there's, there's a couple of things to note. It's a challenging site. Isaiah has, has you know, lived through this for some time. Uh, while 33,000 square feet uh, would be you know, useful to be able to, to fully build the site, the R5D would limit him to closer to 30,000 square feet. Uh, and also, uh, importantly, the R5D is not included in the city's mandatory inclusionary housing program, whereas the R6B is. So those are the primary differences. Um, you know, I would say that the uh, affordability was not a critical issue at the community board. They were more concerned that the property top out at four stories in height uh, than, than, uh, than any other factor, and that was uh, what was most important to the Civic as well. So that's the, those are the primary differences. I say you want to say something? Yeah. It's between... It, you, 
Just press the button. Oh, on the he's right. good. He's good. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, at the R5D, according to apartment size, it's we just wanted to correct, which is between 23 and 28, most likely apartments. That would be the, the difference. Thank you. The community board also recommended cutting back the rezoning area not to include the school. Why was the school included in the rezoning? So, Chair, um, the school has an existing floor area ratio of 1.5. Uh, that 1.5 is uh, contextual with the existing R32 zoning district, as well as with the proposed R6B district. So um, it largely was done, as is often the case with city planning, with a view towards the context of the surrounding area and that it would be appropriate to include both block frontages in the rezoning. Um, Isaiah has no interest in the property to the north. Uh, and again, there, there have been community discussions with regards to that property. Uh, the council, I know, is well aware of its authority to alter the scope of a rezoning in terms of geographic area. Uh, but um, basically, um, it's, uh, the commission and the applicant together in developing a land use rationale felt that including those two blocks was, in, was appropriate, given the similarity of land use in the area, given the similarity of street frontages, and the similarity in terms of the surrounding context. Okay. Is this site vulnerable to storm surge or other types of flooding? And what resiliency design measures are you incorporating? I can answer that. Oh, please. No, it's not um, subject to storm. Uh, I'm sorry, you can say the, the storm surge storm or other surge. types of flooding. No, it's not in the flooding area. And as we, we have underground parking, there would be pumps put in place if there ever was a situation where water would occur to constantly dewater the, the, the premises, but it's not in a flood zone at all. What about regarding the community around for the homeowners? Well, we would be putting in new drainage all, new, uh, all around the property, so it would be better than it actually is now. So there would be no, it would it'd be less possibility for any strong storm surge or anything. If there was that to happen, there would be less with the new drainage that we'd be putting in. Dry wells would be put in, different things would be put in to absorb the water. Do you anticipate this area to be in a storm surge or a type of flooding area in the future? No, we don't. This area, all through Superstorm Sandy, which was the last major storm that was there, it was dry. It, it's, it's the level of ground elevation would not put it in the path of anything with storm surge. And Chair, if I may add, just uh, to, uh, again, as submitted with the LR item three, with specificity, the nature of the flood mitigation measures, uh, the proposed development is not in the flood zone, but the applicant intends to provide flood mitigation measures, including cellar wall walls and flooring constructed of concrete or CMU. Um, cellar, level, cellar, level out, cellar level outlets would be elevated. Cell cellar level parking will allow for automatic entry and exit of floodwaters. By means of breakaway enclosures, elevator pits would incorporate uh, waterproofing and some pumps and flood alarms. So many of the items which Isaiah uh, had mentioned uh, in detail are included in materials, but these would be uh, uh, enacted at the property. Thank you. How much parking spots uh, do you anticipate for this property? Pro uh, as property excuse me. As it stands with an R5D, we can, on one level, we can easily provide 24, 22 to 24 parking spaces. If necessary, we can go down a little deeper and, and stack the cars and provide up to, it'd be a greater expense, but provide up to 48 spaces. Um, but we, by stacking the vehicles and having an, an automated system put in. Um, are there, is there any major uh, transportation options uh, close by this area? Yes, we have the A train, which is within the block. It's on the same block as the A train. The Not plans... Even, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Not okay. even... I don't think it's even 200 feet away. Yeah. Okay. The plans you presented included car elevators to access below-grade parking. Is that the only feasible way to incorporate on-site parking? And what is the cost of these elevators compared to more typical ramps? There's a greater cost, and that, with, if we're going with the R5D, we would not use elevators, we'd use ramps. We'd use a ramp to provide up to 24 parking spaces on one level, and that would, that would allow us to have, when coming off the street of Farrakway Boulevard at about 30 feet. So we wouldn't need elevators if we were gonna go with the R5D um, zoning. Thank you. 
Um, I would now like to turn it over to Majority Whip Brooks Powers to ask her questions. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for um, those questions. I know recently we had Superstorm, not Superstorm, but Winterstorm Elliott. And so in that area, in that vicinity, there was some flooding that happened. Um, so I am glad to hear that you're considering um, what that sewage is going to look like. So the community board and other local stakeholders support development at this site under R5D zoning, which is one story lower and slightly less density compared to R6B. Is it feasible to develop under R5D zoning? Yes. And do you have today the, the financial um, access to capital to ensure that this project happens? Yes, we do. The proposed rezoning area, well, no. You asked this question. Thank you for that one. Um, the community has also expressed interest in adding some, ki some kind of community serving space to this proposal. Would the developer consider setting aside a portion of the ground floor for a multi-purpose community room accessible to the public for small events and community meetings? At the R5D level, that's very difficult because we're restricted to the amount of apartments we can have in the height of the building. At the R6B level, we could do that. We could put in a community facility in the, on the first floor and then compensate with the necessary number of apartments on higher floors. It's very difficult to, to imagine that at an R5D level. So at an R5D, is the answer no? It would be difficult. It, it would be difficult. I, to, I, I need a clear answer. I think the answer would be no at an R5D level. What is your plan to ensure local hiring and MWBE participation? Well, we would be hiring MWBE certified companies um, to work there. What we percentage? Are, um, well, my partner Erica, there, she's an MWBE too, so most likely it would be 100% would be uh, the, the electricians from the neighborhood are certified MWBE, the plumbers, we, we would, it would be 100%. Well, I, oh, I'd like to qualify that. So, um, <laughs> you know, as going through the Euler process, um, the Queensboro president often weighs in on these matters and discusses minimum MBWE, MWBE hiring standards, uh, which um, talking about those with Isaiah, we're, we're clearly going to meet, which are something in the neighborhood of 25 to 30%, and I think that that's a very comfortable number. Um, so I don't... I'd like Can to you commit to at least 50%? Yes. Um, will this development have good jobs for building service workers? Yes. Neighbors have expressed concern about the impacts of construction. What are your plans for mitigating pests and other nu nuisances generated by construction? Can you commit also to address any such issues and to update the community board on construction progress and mitigation plans throughout the life of the construction yes we can and we've already started addressing the, the pest situation and we will do that throughout the life of the construction project and just went again to um have on record in terms of challenge charter school recognizing the community does not want that um, school within the application, nor does the school want to be included in the application. Um, it's my understanding that you are okay as well with the removal yes. of that. Um, so our application includes the adjacent parcel. Um, uh, we included it in the application because we had to make a land use rationale in city planning. Mm -hmm. To the extent that that is removed from the rezoning, we have no interest, financial or otherwise, in that parcel. And we feel that our application has merit and satisfies a land use rationale even without that parcel. So I don't want to say that we are encouraging that, but to the extent that it is removed, uh, it would not have a material adverse effect on our application. Okay, I wonder why it was added then if that's the case. But just going back to... Um, Can I just say one thing? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, we, I didn't add it. It was never... <laughs> A we'll see your application. <laughs> <laughs> it was this application probably was seven years ago, two thousand and seventeen, two six years ago. 
And at the time, I think the rationale might have been different, but I never requested or never asked for it to be added. I've spoken with Pastor Mullins and fully support his, his, his uh, line of thinking of not wanting him involved. Um, in terms of the, the community benefits, I know you've been having a lot of conversation with members of the community in terms of your commitments. Can you give me a readout of where you are with commitments to my community members? When last we spoke, um, th there were several things we were, we were, we were going to be involved in. They're going to be involved in, the, we, we've, we've come up with a design that I think that's favorable to all of us and uh, it gives me the ability to build the building, a nice building. Um, the green, the green area, the solar, um, putting in the solar, the, the building having solar in it, the building having a large green area in it, um, the hiring, local hiring, doing workforce hiring. Um, we're we're taking at-risk youth, um, people that other ordinarily would not be able to find jobs in this nature. We're training them on in each aspect of and trade line of this um, this specific particular job. So. We've ha I've had several inputs. I've had several meetings with them. I, I've actually started to enjoy it. We, um, we're coming up to things together of how we can make this uh, a better site to work for them that's comfortable for everyone and that they can feel comfortable with it coming in their neighborhood. So I think it's going to be something that you'll see long term turned out, for, turned out very well. And what's the timeline if this application is approved for this construction? Within 14 to 16 months. To have shovel in the ground? To have, no, we'll have shovel in the ground. If you, if this, assuming this would be approved somewhere around May, we'd probably be demoing June or July, and within 16 months after that be completed, God willing. Um, and what's your commitment in terms of outreach for um, potential renters? We were using local brokers in the area um, to get to, to, to acquire tenancy. Um, we will be advertising, we will be, this will be a fully market rate building, I believe, because there'll be no affordability. So we're making a preference to try and get first responders, law enforcement. Uh, we'll be catering to, uh, to try and have that in the building. Teachers. Um, and you'll advertise in the local papers, The Wave, The Rockaway Times. Yes, The Wave, The Rockaway Times. We'll be advertising in all those papers. Yes, we will. Um, and what's the composition of the apartments at this point? One in, at this point, one in two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So no three? No threes. Not, they, the community expressed mm -hmm. they didn't desire threes to be part of that. Um, and then parking, I know when we spoke early, we spoke about one to one. Yes. Um, is that still the case? That still will be the case. The, I, I, at the R5D level, I think we max out at decent size apartments at 28. So we can fit 22 to 24 on one level. So th we, the worst comes to worst, we'd have to maybe have one stackable, two stackable units for four extra vehicles. And then will there be a super that resides at? Yes, there will be. And will that person be locally hired? Yes, he will be. And or in, she. And then in terms of the maintenance and upkeep of the grounds? That super will be responsible for it, but we will have a, a landscaping company uh, we've I've tried to do a much better job over the last month or so, and and when they addressed their concerns, and uh, I do apologize for that in the past. It was several reasons, but we've we've corrected that. And um, I know in the statement I read on behalf of the constituents, they talked about like noise mitigation too. So I just want to emphasize that in addition to the the pest mitigation um, as well. And then in terms going back to the community space, because I think that is important. So I, I think we have some time left. I would like you to revisit that, even okay. if it's a thousand square feet, something that the community can be able to, to utilize um, as a community space. I, I have a, is that allowed under the office? Uh, it is. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll address it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Whip. There being no questions for this applicant panel, you are now excused. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on 25-46 Far Rockaway Boulevard rezoning proposal remotely or in person? Chair Riley, there is one member of the public who has signed up to uh, speak remotely. This is the lowest or. Members of the public we will be given two minutes to speak. Please do not begin until the Sergeant at Arms has started the clock. You may begin.
Dolores. One minute, uh, Chair Riley. We are confirming whether Miss Riley or not. Okay. Whether Dolores is still on. Miss Dolores, you Thank may begin. Thank you, yes. Go they ahead. just added me to the panel. So I'm ready to begin. My name is Dolores Orr. I'm chair of community board 14. And as has been stated, the uh, community board does oppose the upzoning to the RB5. And the reason for that is the height uh, is not in context with the surrounding community. Testimony from the residents expressed concerns about the height, shadows, parking, not enough uh, school seats. And the property owner has been negligent in maintaining the property despite numerous residents um, requesting it. So we're very happy to hear that they ha that has been corrected. Community Board 14 already has 12,000 uh, units of affordable housing and that's planned or completed in the zip code. Additionally, commun uh, Community Board 14 opposes city planning up zoning of the adjacent lot at Challenge Prep. Uh, and city planning did this without any notification or discussion with Reverend um, Mullins. And he only learned about it when the neighbors started coming and objecting to the school being upzoned. So we did our motion did pass in which that uh, based on feedback from the residents and discussion by the board that we would support RD, uh, R5D and continue to oppose the R6B as in June of this year. Um, Community Board 14 has a moratorium. We passed a unanimous motion that there's a moratorium on any upzoning uh, R6 and above. And um, OEM has yet to give us an evacuation plan. The entire peninsula is in an uh, M1 uh, zone, flood zone, which is the highest flood zone. And um, that remains a concern to us. So we support this project based on the resident uh, feedback and negotiation with the developer. And we'd like to be kept apprised of uh, advances on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lores. And can I just say we're thrilled about nearly 100% parking. You're probably the <laughs> second developer on the Rockway Peninsula that has given 100% parking. So thank you for that. Got something. <laughs> If there are any members of the public who, who wish to testify at, the, at this point on 2546 Far Rockway rezoning proposal remotely, please press the raise hand button now, or if in person, please identify yourself to one of the sergeants. The meeting will stand at ease uh, while we check for any newly registered members of the public. There being no other members of the public who wish to testify on preconsiders LUs relating to ULIPS number C200232, ZMQ and N220330, ZRQ relating to the 25 46 Far Rockaway Boulevard rezoning proposal, the public hearing is now closed and the items are laid over. That concludes today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use, and other council staff and the Sergeant at Arms for participating in today's meeting. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.